Hey there, everybody. So we are on day 42 of the Omer Count. I'm Jeremiah, and this is my pal Moshe. How's it going? And we're going to be leading in prayer today and uh, entering into a spirit of worship together, even in prayer, and uh, talking about some of the things that are going on around the Alley Return Center. And uh, we even have a short little message prepared, so if you guys got any prayer requests, you can go ahead and... Hit us up. Yeah, put them Hit us down. Up. That's what we're here for. Yep. We're like the neighborhood watch for the world right now. Watching mm -hmm. after you guys in prayer, covering you guys in prayer, whatever your needs are, whatever uh, you guys feel God's speaking to you, just you can feel free to text that out, share this stream, uh, and we just want to be blessed people today. Yeah, it's all about blessing. Um, we're in a season of, you could almost call it drought and famine, but at the same time, there is blessing in the pockets of blessing. That's kind of what I've been feeling anyway for me. Uh, God will provide streams in the desert. Oh, definitely. You know, in a difficult time, so I'm kind of clinging on to that right now. I know there's been evidence of it, as you guys know, with the rising of the Sea of Galilee through the whole COVID crisis stuff that's been going on. Everything around us has just been overflowing. It's been like a, there was a word before this whole COVID thing that happened was an acceleration. So we felt that God is equipping us with the tools to run forward to the high calling that he's given us. So it's like God saying, okay, what's stopping you from running towards God full force? Like, let's just go go run towards him. It's like prodigal son where he has his, head, his arms open. So what is stopping us from just running, you know, into the calling that he's given us? And we felt like God is equipping us with the tools. So if God's called you to serve the poor, so he's equipping you with, let's say, the finances to and maybe a car that you need to drive the food baskets around. So we believe there was a time of equipping. We believe that's still happening. And so there's a time of acceleration where we're able to just accelerate at exponential. And then we've seen that physically in like the Sea of Galilee. It's, it's the fullest it's not ever been, but it's it's almost on the same level. It's like they're going to need to open up this, this dam over there. It's really crazy what's well, just down the street. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do. I resonate with that. There's these pockets. So during the crazy times, there's these pockets of peace, pockets of where God's just blessing people. He's, he's downloading visions, uh, you know, just giving us those things. So praise the Lord. Really excited about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, floodgates I was hearing when you were talking just now. Um, basically, the Sea of Galilee has a water table, a level to where it can't go beyond, or else it starts to flood the city that's kind of built around it. So the Jordan River is the outlet, and they have it dammed up in order to kind of preserve, you know, the uh, modern situation that's going on there. And the Jordan River that flows back here is kind of like the, the mouth of it. It's just, you know, couple kilometers up the road and if they need to open that up it's going to actually flood the entire Jordan Valley out and they prepare for that but that's like in our backyard so the floods are they're probably not going to be coming now this year we, we were really close to them opening up but I think they did open it up a little bit so, so it doesn't flood the valley yeah so it gave, it gave a little bit more flow and so the Jordan River is really really nice right now we actually just got in the other night we went out and Oh, it's great. We had, Jordan River. We had a great time. We were just, uh, did a Tarzan swing right into the, the water, and you gotta watch out for the catfish. Oh, those things get big. Yeah, they're not kosher, Ooh. and they are. They are not kosher. Yeah, they're kind of slimy and gross, and they got whiskers and stuff, but, um, you know, they don't, they don't bother you if you don't bother them, and I think there's, they're probably scared of us splashing around, so. Anyway, we had a great time in the Jordan yeah. River. It's awesome to be here, and that's part of the blessing, um, of being here in mm -hmm. Israel in a time like this, so. Yeah, we got to be digging into the Word. This is my Bible, and nice. this shows I've been using it a lot or neglecting it. I guess that's <laughs> up to you guys to decide. Wow. <laughs> hardcover, huh? Yeah, hardcover, and then it came off, but I still, I still got the, the, the last page there. Uh, but yes. The last page of the Bible, or the last page of the notes? The last page of the, no, it's like, the hard page, yeah, the last little, like, I got the whole bottle, so there. Okay. But let's do a quick shout out to Steve Martin. Good to see you guys from Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. How's it going? Also, Deanna Porter, Shalom from Mexico. Hannah Menarcha coming at you from USA. Mm -hmm. Is she back in USA? Um, I 
Dude, she must have flown out. Dude, she's been there. Oh, she's been there. So my bad. Sorry, Hannah. It feels like you're here with us right now. Shut up, Davis. Yeah. <laughs> and we got Dave Flood, hi from South Africa. Uh, we have. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't we, know got Sarala, we got the Ephraim, we got Sue, we got Heim, Cindy, you know, the regulars. Yes. And here we are. So any yeah, any prayer requests or anything you guys have, we're here to pray for you guys. We want to see God's breakthrough in your life. And today we're gonna to be speaking about trust and how to trust God more fully and how to implement that in our lives. Mm. Yeah, one thought. Just when you brought up trust was, let's take a look at where people are putting their trust these days. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's look at you know the mainstream people that we kind of follow. You know the celebrities, the beeps, the voices, the beeps, all the different people that are in front. You know, speaking the mouthpieces of today. You know, they've all invested and put their trust in things of this world that have been shaken in a mighty way and Kanye West that's nothing to shake a stick at you know I mean they've been people have been putting their trust in things and we've been putting our trust in the Lord and in the Word and trying to be humble you know the best we can not searching for pl a platform let's say or not trying to make the most money but you know serve the Lord and, and Meek and humble way, humility and meekness, those are important. So, the f script has really been flipped in this season. I mean, who is the one controlling this whole COVID corona thing? We're not 100% sure. But the people that have been serving false idols and that have been putting their trust in idols and things that are not the Lord are really paying the price. Definitely. I, I saw that too. It's funny you bring that up. People that trusted in their uh, in money or in their businesses and people would say there's okay, there's like a financial crisis like in 2008 or any of these things where the markets fall and then you know, people go crazy. Uh, this was something that was just came out of nowhere, basically. No one could have predicted it, but it just shows where we're supposed to be putting our trust, like you said. Mm -hmm. So people that were putting, they were like neglecting their family, not, not naming it, I don't know. Saying. I'm saying there were people like that. Not naming any names. Yeah, right? not naming names. <laughs> if someone would be me, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's like neglecting the things that are, and it made us think what is the most important to us? What is what is really important to us? And I believe it's the eternal, and that's the only unshakable kingdom or mm -hmm. thing is, is God's kingdom, and that's the eternal. And uh, yeah, we want to encourage you guys to just continue putting your trust in that and sowing. It's, we're we're going to reap what we sow, and as we sow into the kingdom, we're going to get. From the kingdom of God, uh, and especially, I think when we it says the things that we sow in secret, He's going to reward us openly. Those things that we're doing in secret. Mm -hmm. So being those humble, having that hum hum humility um, on it, which is amazing. And have you? I'm just I'm speaking to the choir here. But uh, Cindy Carsonis says good morning. <laughs> morning, morning. So yeah, let's let's just pray for renewed trust today. Um, you know, we just open it up in prayer and just pray for, for us to put our trust in the Lord because uh, the things of this world are, are falling away uh, very quickly and they're, they're so vain. They really are. Lord, we just uh, come before you. We thank you for your provision uh, for a new day and for another time where we can meet together and pray together and uh, worship you. And we do worship you, Lord, the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua, Hamashiach, King of Kings, Lord of the Lords, bright morning star. We thank you for just being in our midst, and I ask you to touch each and every person who's listening and tuning in right now and entering in, and we invite you all at home to enter in with us in this prayer uh, to God, mm -hmm. the creator of all things, and uh, Lord, we ask you for trust. We ask you to mm -hmm. increase Yes, Lord. Trust in us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just come before you. We thank you. Yes, for the trust that you're building in us, Lord. As we just, uh, as we trust you, Lord, just like David, like um, Peter walked out on the water and just trust you, and you said, "Step out, Lord." As we step out in faith, we know that you're going to hold us up, Lord, in whatever circumstance we might be in. We just thank you for that, and we just continue pray for that continued uh, stepping out in faith, Lord, that we can just do that even in greater measures than ever before. And we know that you're, you're there to catch us, Lord. We just thank you. 
And I do want, I want to lift up Steve Martin. Uh, he says, my wife Lori and I will be there at the Ark July 28th through 31st. Third time there, looking forward to it after two delays of flights already. So you guys, way to go, Steve Martin and Lori. You guys have been trying to get through during this crisis. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So that is really cool. So I just want to lift them up in prayer too. We just pray for Steve Martin and we just pray that they would be able to make it through on July 28th through 31st. Uh, they're having their third time here, Lord. We just pray for your blessing, pray for your favor, that they would be able to get through and get here right on time, right in your timing, Lord. Smoothly, we just pray for uh, everything would be covered, whatever it is they need. If it's finances, if it's uh, uh, cheaper flights, whatever it might be, we just pray that we just bring those things to pass. So you just make a way where there is no way and prepare the way ahead of them. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So, I'm kind of uh, just slipping through Isaiah here, and, um, you know, there's a short uh, little paragraph I want to read in Isaiah 12, but Isaiah 11 is just jumping off the page at me. Would you mind if I just went ahead and oh, read it out loud? Please do. Go get it on, man. Okay. Uh, the root of Jesse, there shall come forth, this is Isaiah chapter 11, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Who wants that? The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Lord, we ask you for yes. the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion, and the fat one together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. This is an amazing uh, many times prophecies about um, where things will be. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand against again a second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros and Cush, from Elam and Shinar, and from Hamath and the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nation and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. That's me and you, buddy. Said, dude. From the four corners of the earth. Also the envy of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim, but they shall fly down upon the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west. They shall plunder together the people of the east, and they shall lay their hand on Edom and Moab, and the people of Ammon shall obey them. Okay, we're almost finished here. The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river, and strike it in the seven streams, and make men cross over dry shod. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people. Mm -hmm who will be left from Assyria, as it was for Israel in the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. That's the highway that, the highway for, from Egypt down through Assyria. Mm -hmm. That's the, um, I forget what they call it, but there's people that are actually preparing for this highway. Isaiah 19 highway. Yeah. 19. Although this is... It's not Isaiah 19, Isaiah but it's, it's exactly. it might be the same. I don't know. If yeah, it's the same. Now. And just to finish off in 12, which leads us into what we were going to talk about today, is that in that day you will say, O oh Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah the Lord is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Mm -hmm. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. That's like a, it's a call to action, I believe. I don't feel it's like a passive I will trust. Like, I'm going to passively trust. I feel it's like I'm actively trust him in every situation and not be afraid. Uh, so now we've just passed through 
a lot of different things where people have been fearful, including myself at certain points, where we're like, oh no, where's my next uh, paycheck coming from? Where, how am I gonna make it through this month? Things like that. So our trust is only tested in times of testing, which is where there's a need for it. So if I'm, you know, if everything's great and I don't need anything, then it's my trust is not tested so much. I feel like we all just recently went through a time of testing and, I, and testing is what refines us, of course, we all know that. So as we choose to trust, like right now, we're choosing to trust, God's gonna come through for us and he cares more, of course, for the sparrows. Mm -hmm. How much does he care for the sparrows? How much more does he care for us? So I was thinking, th words like that really reassure, reassure me in these times um, of trusting, just learning to trust God. And actually on another note, I was reading this morning about Joshua, I was in Joshua 11, where Joshua was going throughout the land and he was um, basically called to just clear the land and take it, take the land for, for, uh, for Israel. And so then he's going through this land and he's taking down Jericho, he's taking down these giants, the Anak, he's taking all these people, right? And so, and they're afraid, Joshua's afraid, but God is saying, trust me. So it comes to this place in Joshua 11 where it's like the northern conquest is what it starts out here. And it's like, came to pass that Javan, king of Hazor, heard these things that he sent to Joab, the king of Madon, the king of Shimron, the king of Asha, Asha. Anyhow, these are quite pretty crazy, a bunch of kings. I think there's like at least 10 kings here. Amorite, the Hittite, the Parasite, the Jebusites in the mountains, the Hivites below, Hermon in the land of Mizpah. There's like 10 or, 10 or 11 kings here. They came with uh, many horses and chariots. And when they, all the kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Meron to fight against Israel. Now check this out. Then it says, But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow, about this time, so I don't know, it's 1 o'clock, about this time, I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. And so God just spoke. So I feel like in times of, uh, you know, where we need to trust, we just got to give it to God and He's going to speak to us. And even if He doesn't speak to us right away, as we just put our trust in Him, it's going to come through. It says, seek, seek me while I may be found. Knock and I'm going to answer to you. And there's a cool verse where it says, keep knocking. So it's like, how long do I need to wait? How long do I need to keep on saying, okay, well, I haven't seen breakthrough. I'm almost at the end of the month. I have no money. What do I do now? So God's like, keep knocking. Keep trusting me. And I think it's, it's like a father with his kids saying like, you know, I told him to don't leave that room until I come back. So, and but the father is looking through the window and saying, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a good thing. He's seeing his kid wanting to leave the room and he's about to come in, but he's waiting and he knows that he's coming back at two. He sees the clock. I don't know if this is a good analogy. But he just wants to see that he's going to be trustworthy and he's going to trust him that he's going to come back with whatever it is that he's bringing. Mm -hmm. Xbox, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> the Lord is waiting for our little steps of faith and he's waiting for our little acts of trust and kindness. Mm -hmm. He loves that. He's he's totally involved in the little details of whether you're going to you know, yeah. be there for him, whether you're going to open, open your Bible and, and read the Word and Praise the Lord for the goodness and you know, and for His goodness. Yeah, yeah. He loves He loves our trust. He loves our faith, and He loves the little details of our life that maybe we even think are insignificant. But you know, as you were reading that, I just started to feel like, what better place are we or could we be than in the hand of the Lord? You know, no, in, a time, in a time like this, I have felt. I mean, up front when all this you know mess started. I was I was a bit nervous. I was because I knew what was coming because I had been sensing that for years, and yeah. then I finally felt like, wow, this this is actually it now. So there was that moment of fear. I won't say I hadn't experienced it. I think everybody, and even you at home, I'm sure we all had our moments where things were out of hand, out of control. We didn't know what was going on, and we needed to exercise our trust and faith in the Lord for mm -hmm. sure. But, you know, after you get over that initial phase, I started to realize as, you know, the days went on that other people that weren't putting their faith in the Lord and haven't put their faith in the Lord didn't know what to do with themselves. Uh, scared, they were a mess, depressed at home, you know, all these different stories you hear about people hanging themselves. I've heard all kinds of, you know, as 
terrible is that it got nasty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it really did get nasty. People are um, out of work, they're afraid, and um, panicking, you know, going, buying that toilet paper like crazy. I mean, that whole thing, you know. Yeah. And when you look back on it, I mean, I, I just didn't go there. And you know why? Because I put my trust in the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I didn't, I didn't waste my time building up idols. I mean, we're all guilty of it at some point. I'm not perfect, but overall, I'm glad that I'm, I have that rock of salvation to stand on. Because right now, I feel like I couldn't be in a better place. Yeah. So praise the Lord. Amen. Can anybody else attest to being in the right place right now and feeling great in the hands of the Lord? Yeah. I mean, what better, place, Lord, what better place to be than in the arms of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Under, it's interesting how it says, under his wing, not to really as a wing, but but it's like, uh, I guess you could say, there's it's an analogy, I guess, but yeah, they are like nestled like a hand cover, it, you know, uh, brings it, that seems very, you know, snugly in a way. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry, on another, Sarala Ike. Very oh, snuggly. Yeah, <laughs> snuggly. <laughs> We're just like, getting snuggly in here. Getting snuggly with you guys. Yeah. Uh, Akan, Akanathan, Sarala Akanathan, maybe you can pronounce it better. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay, man. I don't think yeah. I have to pronounce the last name. I'm sorry. Sarala, yeah. that's what Sarala. it's for me, yeah. So I want to lift up Sarala about her request. She wants to make Aliyah to Israel in the near future. Now that's amazing, and we're going to be trusting God a lot during that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, let's just, uh, Lord, just come before you for Sarala, Lord, and just that as she's uh, seeking you in this, Lord, making Aliyah, Lord, just coming to this land. Lord, we just pray Lord, that you would just open up the doors. Lord, we pray you close any doors that are not from you. Open up the doors that are from you. That she could just run through those doors. Lord, we pray for favor. Pray for Lord's smoothness uh, with uh, of, of her journey towards here. We pray for your perfect timing, Lord. And we believe that's also part of the trusting thing. Is trusting you for the perfect timing. Lord, we just want to trust you in all our ways and, and acknowledge you so you can direct our path. So we just pray that you would direct uh, divinely direct Sarala's path uh, towards this land, Lord, in your perfect time. And we just pray for favor, uh, Lord, for people to even be showing up at at, um, at her house, Lord, um, and just be uh, and, and encouraging her, and Lord, and pray for confirmations in the right timing. Pray you just bring those confirmations, Lord, even today. We just pray you continue to bring these confirmations and continue to mold her, direct her, in your holy name, Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. So, I want to apply that to anybody that wants to make Aliyah. Yeah. Really, that the doors yeah. would be open. We have a lot of people here that want to be here, but unfortunately, um, as a believer, as a Jewish believer, you're being restricted at this time by the state of Israel. For those of you who don't know, unfortunately. So, we just want to pray that that restriction will just be broken off. Whatever is causing that bottleneck for believers yeah. that aren't able to enter the land, we just want to come against that in the name of Yeshua and Lord, we ask that you would open up that floodgate mm -hmm. uh, for the believers to be able to come. And so Isaiah 14, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. But then people will take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of the Lord. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. Hmm. Is that is that's not the UN version? That's the uh, right. That's the original. Yeah, yeah, that's the original. <laughs> and um, oh, the UN version. Yeah, how nice. Yeah, he likes it. Yeah, we've heard it. But just right there, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. So, Sarala and anyone else who wants to come back, stand on the promises of the word, because they're written right here. And as we read earlier, they're coming in past today. So. Shout out, uh, shout out to Ephraim, sorry, dude. Also, the Ron Seagal. Also, shout out to Doug Hershey. Good to have you on. I'm missing you. Mm. Uh, also, Andre Shaul Lugas. And also, is it Julie Emmer? You just shout everyone out. Shout everyone out, right out, one right after the other. Yeah, shout yeah. out to you guys. Love, yeah. lots of love coming from Israel to you. Yeah, you guys can even pray for us too. You know, you can throw some prayer requests in there. Um, I look like I need prayer. 
This yeah. sun is crazy. Yeah, we've been working pretty hard. It's been a heat wave this past week. We're up in a, over 110 degrees uh, Fahrenheit weather here. So, luckily, the air conditioning is taking you know taking it down a few notches. So I've been trying to edit and catch up on some of that kind of work where I can be in the AC because it is brutal out. I actually literally saw um, there was a, a lady just laying flat on the sidewalk. I was just driving by and I saw two people over her. She was just like, oh, she's like an older lady. Wow. I was like, whoa, what happened here? I jumped out of the car uh, and went over there and she was just like down. They were pouring water on her face. It was like insane. So I got her up and then she didn't speak any uh, English or Hebrew. I think she was Russian. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, so where do you want? We were on our way to go to the uh, medical clinic. So I was like, do you want to go to this one? She was like, no, no, no. And then and I ended up taking her home. She just wanted to go home. So I, I took her home uh, because she wasn't part of that clinic. But it was, it's so hot. People are getting heat stroke and just like fainting. Wow. That's, that's how hot it was. That was the other day. Oh. I was like, whoa. But I don't know if she was like not, uh, you know, hydrated. She might have mm -hmm. drunk water. She was either slain in the spirit or oh, just <laughs> extremely overheated. <laughs> But oh yeah, I was thinking about escalation or, or acceleration, that as the heat rises, it's like our fire for God is rising too. Like I, I do believe there's a correlation between physical realities and spiritual realities. Like when they walked into the Jordan, they were up waist high before the Jordan actually split. So we're talking about trusting. So these priests are like, hey, uh, yo, uh, Yossi, or whatever the guy's name was, Levi, I guess Levi would be their name. Uh, this is, the water didn't, it didn't actually part yet, so, you know, I already got my undies mm -hmm. wet. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you have to trust God uh, at some point, but then God came through. They, they did the faith move, and then after that came the, the breakthrough. So it's like, there's a physical moving out, stepping out of faith, like, like um, Peter stepped out onto the water, and God's like, shoom, and then, you know, became... Kind of like in Indiana Jones where he steps out on that bridge and then it's like, shoom, oh, boom. I think that was a good, actually, uh, kind of an analogy of stepping out of faith since we're talking about faith and trust kind of go together. Yeah, well, it really makes sense. Like, nobody ever said that stepping out in faith was going to be clean or easy or simple. You know, like you said, like they had to actually go out into the water waist deep with uh, an entire tribe of people and I mean the Jordan River wasn't just some little uh, flowy little quiet yeah. place where you can swim and have fun. I mean it was yeah. a raging it's huge like massive, river. Yeah. I mean it was no joke that it had to be separated. So they were like, well we're just gonna walk out of it. I mean it must have been scary, you know? I'm wondering how heavy was that ark because like it was played with gold. Gold was pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. okay. Played with gold, you got all this stuff, you got like seraphims on it, like so, that's all plated with gold. If you see how they made it and then you got like uh, that mana inside. I forgot exactly what's in it, but I was guessing that's pretty heavy. Well, the, the stone right. tablets of the, the original Ten Commandments. Yeah. Uh, the, the staff of Moses and the mana. I think those are the three things. If anything else is in the ark, let us know. Yeah. You can chime in, but I think that's it. Um, that staff, man, I'd love to get my hands on that bad boy. That'll be a nice walking stick. Just You can yeah. just sprout and like, Bring shade to you if you need it. You can just start zapping people with it. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting so, rocks. Oh, that's, that was his. He wasn't supposed to hit the rock. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes walking down the streets in Israel, I wish I would have one of those canes and just, just make people vanish. You know, just oh, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Not kill them, but we don't want to do that. Anyhow, yeah, like so. Zapping zombies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, those are the times we're entering into, it seems like. Um, just the urgency of the hour has really been on my heart these days, and um, if anyone else is tracking with me, I'm sure you've been reading all kinds of uh, reports about the things that are happening behind uh, what we see, kind of like behind the veil, like a, let's say there's like a dark power behind, operating behind all the uh, faces and voices that we see. So. Whatever that is that's operating, we know it's the enemy, but it's also in people and it's actually physically happening. It's so hard to know the full truth and to the extent of the darkness. And I just want to encourage you today to trust in the Lord and not to trust in the voices that are leading you towards these, 
this darkness. Now, I know we want to be educated, we want to understand what's going on, we want to know the truth, we don't want to just be sheep being led to slaughter, but you also don't want to give the darkness too much credit, and so we need to focus on our calling, we need to get right before the Lord, we need to be spending time in prayer. This, is actually, this has been great for me, just to daily mm -hmm. start just giving that hour to focusing on things above and praying with like-minded believers. It's amazing. So tell your friends about this uh, time that we have here. Share it with your friends. It'd be great to have. Um, we have plenty of time to be praying for people. We could have others praying. But you can even share on your Facebook right now. Just go to the share link and uh, you can start a watch party or share the, the clip. Um, we got Tammy Richards with us. Yeah, because more people, we need to come together and spread the, the truth of who God is and the good things and the glory of what He's doing and get away from the uh, darkness and plans of the enemy because really it's just a trap. Because there's no way to know. There's so much false mm -hmm. information out there. It's actually sickening. And uh, I'm tired of reading about it, to be honest with you. I think at this point we all know what's going on. It's just a matter of time. So you really just need to put your trust in the Lord mm -hmm. and what He's called you to do. Put your ass to the grind and move forward. Yeah, we got to stop uh, putting our trust in people, and I feel like, because we're talking about trust, right? So I'm really feeling that it's so easy to put your, your trust in a person, even as like a pastor or something like that, and to be like, you know, oh, he's doing it all right, and I got to do this, and like if I just hang around him or something like that, this, I'm kind of speaking to myself here, mm -hmm. uh, and it's easy to do that, but uh, there's people like George Mueller, and I was feeling, how can we really uh, be able to have that discernment? It's really by getting into the Word. Of God, and I would say, the more you can just read the Word directly, the better. And I'd like to challenge you guys to. There's all these plans out there, and even devotionals. I don't want to discourage you guys from that, but I do want to encourage you guys just to get into the raw Word because there's no way of. It's just the straight. It's like you know, it's like the meat straight straight from the from the cow. <laughs> that's maybe. That's maybe. I don't know if you guys are vegan or whatever, but. Uh, <laughs> That was, it's basically George Mueller, uh, as an example, George Mueller, he didn't read anything except for just the straight Bible, and he was able to, God has, through his spirit, can interpret, interpret things in your lives, and he can show you, you know, some people look at the Bible and they feel like it's hard to understand, the spirit is the one that gives us uh, discernment and understanding of the word, he gives, he opens up our eyes, even Yeshua himself said, uh, you wouldn't have known that unless the Spirit showed you that. And so as we read the Bible directly, the Spirit is actually, He's showing us what it means. He's showing us what He meant. And we're actually getting to know God more, of course, uh, as we do that. So I just want to encourage you guys and myself to do that. So uh, praise the Lord. So I did, I did want to bring... bring um, uh, just bring all of our brothers and sisters around the world uh, to just just before God real quick. Lord, we just come before you uh, for everyone, Lord, at churches around the world, Lord, all the congregations, Lord, we just want to say, Lord, we just pray for that unity and that synchronization of your spirit as we all in our quiet times are seeking you, Lord. We just pray that you would show that in a bigger way, Lord, just that unity where we're all coming together, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that now is the time to shine in such, time, such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for us to shine, Lord, just to give up on anything that's from, from ourselves and just to give it to you, to put our full trust in you, Lord. We just we just say that we just pray that we give you the reins today, Lord. We say uh, we're going to let go and let God, and we just want to let you do your, what you do best, which is miracles. You're God of miracles, Lord. You're the one that makes a way where there is no way. So I just pray for, right now for breakthrough in everyone's life here on this live, and even not on this live, we just pray for those breakthroughs to come through. Lord, we just pray as we seek you first, seek you first, you first, the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. Lord, so we just pray, Lord, uh, for me specifically, especially, Lord, uh, Lord, I would just be seeking you first and seeing as you come through, Lord. My name is Shalom Shalom. Amen, amen. So I stumbled upon um, Ezekiel 37 here, talking about the uh, dry bones coming to life. And. Um, you know, it's happening. It's it just, is. It's just crazy. It's just crazy, man. It's just crazy how what was written thousands of years ago is completely relevant to today. 
in every way. It's amazing. It's yeah. more relevant to today than things that were written ten years ago. You know, it's just so relevant, and it's amazing. I encourage you guys to get into Ezekiel uh, chapter thirty-seven. I can just read a few uh, verses here and there. It's so relevant. It's it it's it's like instant. It's like instantaneous from thousands of years ago. It's like a 5G quick. Mm. It's happening today. Yeah. Um, he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. We're speaking to dry bones today. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and then you shall know that I am the Lord. And as he prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And these, are, these things are happening right now, I agree. People that were like, you could say, well, we're dead in sin, and we're alive in Yeshua, right? So that's basically the dead bones, I believe, is people that are dead, you know, and people that are dormant. You know, of course, there's the actual reality of the dead rising first, you know, when, when Yeshua comes back. But I feel like right now, it's people that were like dormant, they were on the fence, or they were past the fence, they were just uh, kind of on, what is it called, automatic drive? Cruise control. They put their life on cruise control, and they've been cruise controlling through times where they didn't have to, it, their, their uh, faith wasn't tested to a crazy place like it has been now. And this has been awakened and shaking time. And now our faith has been tested and we've been refined. And now these dead bones, you could say, mm -hmm. cruise control bones, are now waking up and it's like, I gotta start driving now. It's also like a playbook. Um, if you wanna go come back uh, to World War II, it's it's really a playbook. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the unfortunate videos of uh, the camps and the Holocaust, the graves, the kind of pits and of just bodies and, and dead, dead bones. But I kind of feel like this is actually speaking to that because as as I prophesied and he commanded me, and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Mm -hmm. Therefore, perhaps I say that thus says the Lord, Behold, all my people have opened your graves and caused you to come up from your graves and mm -hmm. bring you into the land of Israel. Amazing. And so like the graves are almost like just being out of the land. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it could be, uh, I feel, also used it in that kind of way. Uh, but I agree. It's like definitely after the Holocaust and these things, yeah, we're great. seeing an entire great. life from, from death, like uh, ashes to glory. Basically, it's it's really um, an amazing yeah. thing. You served in the army, right? Yeah, Andre Shaul Lucas is, is hitting it up here with these verses. Uh, thank you, man. That's great. Yeah. You're, you're giving all the, the biblical references to this. I really appreciate that. Don Watcher, uh, thanks. Thank you for uh, clarifying about the darkness. Um, we are living. As I agree, 100, Hannah. We're living in supernatural prophetic times. And it's really exciting. Also, with Doug Hershey, um, you know, he was walking around uh, here and just seeing, you know, as prophecy is coming to light, and we're seeing that here to today. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I know he has a couple uh, of videos out about that, um, and it's really, uh, it's really exciting what's happening in our day and age, and how we can know according to the the play, right? Basically, what times we're in, what seasons we're in, what where, what time in the Biblical history mm -hmm. are we now? And you talk about the really playbook sick. right here. Yeah, playwright, yeah. playbook. Yeah, God's playbook. Yeah, uh, playbill. Playbill. <laughs> we got God's playbill right here. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this guy right here, he was in the uh, IDF. When I moved here, I was a little older, so I wasn't able to uh, to do that. And I'm actually thankful because it's not the easiest scenario, and I wanted to be able to focus on things of the Lord rather than. Um, the military at that time, but everybody has their own purpose. What is but, the idea? Is that Israelis don't fool around? Uh, well, they do fool around. They do fool around. around actually. Actually. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not that. Okay. You can think of another one, maybe. But okay. Yeah, the Israel Defense Force. And so, this basically, the word says, he'll pull the, the dry bones out from their graves and set them as an army and bring them back into the land. 
which is exactly what happened. I mean, that happened in the past. How many years has it been now? 70 years, 80 years, you know, since this establishment is dead in Israel. Mm -hmm. So we can know without a shadow of a doubt that we are in the end times mm -hmm. based on the modern state of Israel reemerging and the Jewish people coming back to the land because the, the Old Testament and the New Testament is full of prophecies about the Jewish people coming back. And uh, when we weren't here after a few thousand years, it started to seem like, well, what's really going on here? Did the church inherit the promises? Are we still waiting and waiting? You know, we're, we're desperate, but here we are. So praise the Lord for that. And now on top of that, we've entered into this next season now where we see um, the blood moons that took place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Bible talks about the um, the moon turned to blood and the great mm -hmm. and the terrible day of the Lord. We had that incredibly crazy series of blood moons um, over the past years, and I think there's actually another one coming up soon here. But those signs in the heavens that God has laid out for such a time as this, mm -hmm. and then um, now this great plague and this new great awakening. I'm really excited to see what God's going to do with us as believers mm -hmm. in this time. We're called to, to greatness in this time. Yeah, I want I have a little challenge for you guys. Is uh, I like I like uh, asking myself this: Is how are we letting God? How are we trusting God really with our decisions? Are we are we uh, even with smaller style decisions? Are we actually just saying this is the logical thing to do? Okay, this car is cheaper, so I'm going to go with that. That's the logical thing. Or am I, should I be praying and trusting God about what car I should take because God knows the future? So I like saying basically to people, and I, and I really have my heart youth and, and trying to uh, encourage the younger generation to follow in, in the way. Uh, and so it's, I would ask them, are you letting God, how are you letting God lead your life, actually? Because we most times we fall back on logic and on you know what people are saying around us and things like that, or what's looked at as the right thing to do. Um, so I'll just encourage you guys to continue to ask yourself that question is how can I trust God today with the decisions of today? You know, as big or small those might be. Because when we start giving that trust to Him, it's no there's no better place to be. And it's just I just want to continue encouraging you guys in that. Um, we got oh Deuteronomy six, four through five, and Mark twelve, twenty nine, thirty. That's how. That's we got got it coming on. Yeah, so we don't want to autopilot like Effie says. We don't want to be on autopilot here through life. We want to be active. We want to be in the driving seat. And there's a really great uh, analogy of that uh, that my good friend Gilad Rosinger said. He said, um, we, as we're going ahead, we have to be looking ahead. So if we find ourselves looking behind at the past, at things like that, we're not focused on what's ahead of us. So, and as we accelerate, our focus has to be stronger and stronger. So if you're driving like a race car driver, you need to be hyper-focused on what God is saying, what God's doing ahead of you. But even if you, we get distracted, we look to the sides, we look to the sides, and as we accelerate, we have to be focused 100% on God. So that's what I want to challenge myself and us to do, is just, let's just focus on Him, let's just put that pedal to the metal, and let's just go for it, and let's step out in faith, and, uh, and keep trusting Him. Yeah, well, unfortunately, when you put the pedal to the metal in this country, you get nabbed by the police. They're all over the place that's these true. days. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Those, the, yeah, the fuzz, the yeah, fuzz. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the popo. -po where, the, where did the fuzz come from? Uh, I think the fuzz on the radios they have. The, oh, really? Yeah, the CVs. It's like, yeah, I could be wrong. wrong, I could be wrong. We got a German prophet yeah, yeah, exactly. putting the pedal to the metal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in some deep doo-doo on that front, but... Luckily, we're in the end times, so <laughs> they can't catch up with me. So, there's Psalm 37. I just wanted to read a bit, and it really just lines up with exactly what you were just talking about here and what we're talking about. So, Psalm 37, if you guys at home have your Bibles open, you can open up with me. So, this is a Psalm of David. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. So do not fret because of evil doers, because they're going to be cut down, thus says the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. Straight up, just boom, in your face. Do not fret because of evil doers. Don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. 
Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret when it causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Whoa. It's plain and simple, folks. Wait on your Lord. Trust in Him. Worship Him. Seek Him. Yes. You know, we all need to hear these things as simple and elementary as they sound. I mean, it's just, that's, that's the kingdom. It's not complicated. You don't have to have a degree in, you know, theology to understand the Lord. He made this book for all people. It's, it's very simple, yeah. And I was thinking also, like, just where where do we stop trusting God? Is it when finances get rough? When we're, our health, usually it's in these times. Our health mm -hmm. is waning. Finances aren't looking too good. Uh, let's see, what's another thing? Uh, you could say friend groups are people that you trusted before mm -hmm. are, like, disappointed you. Relationships. Relationships. Mm -hmm. These places, we tend to lose trust in God, and we're like, oh, no this, this, and that, but there's things, let's say in the financial realm, there's actually a verse, I don't remember, maybe Andre knows about it, uh, Andre, uh, it's about where it says, the God lays up riches with the evil for the righteous. So these, there's evil people that are disregarding God, and they don't want anything to do with God, but they've been saving up money, and God like, says, you see all that money that these evil people saved up, and they hate God, and he said, that's actually for you. And God, God mm -hmm. actually brings that money to the righteous. And it's really, um, there's, there's a verse about that. I could Google it maybe. But it's just meaning, it just shows how we don't have anything to worry about. We don't even need to worry about, uh, I need to make a big savings. I need to have a Fortune 500 company by the time I'm 65 in order so I can have a savings for, I mean, I'm not, don't say don't save your money. You should definitely uh, have a kingdom mindset of how to save and things like that. Have a good financial outlook. Uh, as much as possible, but I'm saying that God, God has the pension that God has laid up for you is much better than you know anything that we could really lay up for ourselves uh, as we're following Him 100 percent, you know, as He leads us. So, mm. yeah, just I want to pray for anybody today okay. that needs uh, supernatural provision right now. I just heard that that word, and uh, so let's, let's let's pray for that for all of us. Mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. because we don't want to lay up all our treasures on earth but at the same time we, we do need that provision too we need the Lord to come through yeah yeah so father we just uh, thank you today for even someone right now who's listening that needs supernatural provision that just needs you to step in um, and let us know if that's you step out in faith and let us know raise your hand if that's you uh, and you need supernatural provision today. We just want to speak that word forth. Mm -hmm. I just I see the doors opening, yes, Lord. and uh, I see the the cracks forming and the foundation of whatever has been blocking this. Mm -hmm. And I just see the Lord just breaking it, breaking it open, mm -hmm. and opening, and releasing that uh, supernatural provision to you today. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I just ask you to release it in everybody's life who needs a breakthrough right yes, now. Yes, Lord. That you would just release finances to your servants, Lord. We, we, we humbly come before you and ask you, Lord, to continue to release kingdom finances and mm -hmm. supernatural provision to your children. We come together and we ask you, Lord, release finances mm -hmm. and provision, Lord, as you see fit and bless your people. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct our paths. So just thank you for that. Amen. Yes, so I'm waiting to hear from you, whoever that was that needs that provision today. You can just go ahead and uh, yes. let us know. Looks like Heim said yes. Maybe Heim's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one that Heim, that's needed for that. Okay. Um, well, we're also, we're also coming up to this vertical event. I just want to remind you guys about it. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, I'm actually working as the site manager, or you can say the vice site, site manager of the vertical event. And it's been really supernatural. I just want to tell you guys a little bit about it. Um, so Haim and Dean, you guys know them from Return Ministries. Haim from here at the Allied Return Center. 
they're just all over the place. They're like ambassadors. They're talking to, to the king of Uganda. You know how it is. It's mm -hmm. like all this stuff. So they're so, mm -hmm. they're, they're always, you know, about God's business, doing things that they're doing here and there. So they, I was put in charge of the vertical thing. So I was actually put in charge of the way that we, it's like, imagine being in charge of uh, the temple, building the temple. That's like a big, I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but I was, I wanted to look at it in that way is how, what does God want for this room? So it's like a sanctuary room. And so I had this idea of doing uh, 12 pot lights, like the breastplate of the priests, because it's in the place like the temple where they would, the priests would be ministering. And that's basically the same thing called vertical. We want to be vertical before God and just worshiping whoever goes in there. If they just need to go in there for worship to get, to go vertical, you just go in there and you go vertical. So I had this idea I just wanted to share with you guys. Uh, and I believe that God put it on my heart, and it just is turning out in the end. There's 12, like the breastplate, in the middle of the room, and then there's uh, 12 around the edges, so that's 24. And then I have seven up and down lights around the outside of the building, so it actually turned out to be 24-7, and, and the vision for that place is 24-7 worship Ooh. and prayer. And I didn't think about that. It, it, it went back and forth with the numbers until now we're at 24-7, actually, lights there. So definitely sign up for the vertical online event. Online event is going to be great. And if you guys are in Israel, definitely come and join us here for the wine and cheese event that's going to be here. So mm. sorry for all you guys that are not enjoying that Israeli wine if you're wine coming from us. Well, they can still uh, make their own little party at home. Yeah, do it. Bring it on. Yeah, invite your friends to your house. Uh, I don't know what's up with the social distancing thing, but I pretty much abandoned it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, that, that may not be the opinion of the LA Return Center, but my own personal opinion is that all throughout history, the healthy have been able to be out and about and do their thing, and the sick go into quarantine. So somehow, we've replaced all of human history and decided to flip it and everybody stays on that. I'm not buying it. It's not biblical, and I go by the by the Bible. So anyway, you know another another sorry. Okay. No, 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 for it. A funny thing here. Okay, it's so hot, right? So they, they have these little cheesy um, like thermometers that they put on your forehead mm -hmm. when you go into a supermarket. So if literally if you, if you, I'm actually cooler than the air outside. So if the guy missed my head and hit the outside, it would be like almost fifty or something crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, I just came in from the outside. Celsius. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty. Hot just yeah. from it's more hot outside than my body temperature, so I'm like, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's what like 40 it, something. What are they even measuring? So I'm like, what are you measuring? Like, you know, maybe yeah. I'm cooling down coming into the store, and the, so it's kind of yeah. funny. And the quality <laughs> control on the masks like, I literally walked around with a piece of newspaper over my mouth the other day, and it was totally fine. Nobody had a problem. <laughs> what, Jerusalem? Post? Yeah, in Jerusalem. I, well, I, I, I found when I was in Jerusalem, I realized I didn't have a mask on me, and everybody was wearing masks. I don't know. You like Jim, you like Daisy change it to your beard? No, I just held it on. I just held it here. And nobody said a word. I'm just thinking to myself, well, then there, if there's no guideline and everyone's just doing their own thing anyway, then what are we really even doing? And most people have it down below there. Yeah, they like talk, they talk with it here. So it's like, it's like the whole thing doesn't make much sense. It's really, it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual picture of, of where we're at today. We're, we're having masks put on our face. Yeah. Forced upon us. Really, and we in our mouths are being closed, and that's that's the way I see it. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. We we got to trust in the Lord, and uh, you know, the whole point was have some friends over May twenty eighth. We're going to be doing the dedication of the twenty four seven work glass of prayer. We're going to have wine and cheese for Shavuot, which is generally a dairy meal. Yeah. So get some wine, get some cheese, and join in with us. We're going to be live right here. And right out here on the, uh, the porch here, we're going to have live worship. Yeah. And we're going to have our friends uh, from Israel coming and joining us and just celebrating uh, this amazing, amazing time, this amazing feast. Mm -hmm. And don't miss out. Get on God's calendar. Jeremiah actually has an album out. I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, I forgot the name of it. Jeremiah? It's yeah. It's called Jeremiah. Yes. But uh, he has a bunch of new songs in the pipeline, and he might be doing a little bit of a little tomorrow night, not tomorrow night, 28th evening, we're, we're talking about it, if you're feeling up to it, so that might be a little, uh, 
little bit of a uh, dessert cherry on the top for you guys. Man, you just blew my cover. I blew your cover. Yeah, yeah, so I was still looking to maybe take the back door out of it, but now, <laughs> now it's public. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, well, that, that would be uh, great if you guys could join us. Yeah, dude. I mean, why not? I mean, um, I wrote uh, like seven new songs in the past uh, the past few months since Corona I stopped. I've been working here at the Oliver Trans Center. But right before it, leading up, I was writing a lot of new songs. And Year before that, it was new. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to share a couple of them when we talk about it. Yeah, and I don't want to bore anybody, but generally, my songs have always been about the end times. Um, and when things didn't seem all that bad, maybe they weren't all that relevant. It was kind of like, who's this crazy, like, you know, guy who's. You were like the prophet. About, yeah, talking about the end times or whatever. But it's like, literally, the things that I was saying are happening now. And so, I don't feel crazy anymore, you know what I mean? So like everyone else is great. They don't yeah. know what to do. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows what to do. And I'm like, well, I've been saying it for the past 20 years, but hey, you know? So maybe it's time, you know? Maybe the Lord wants well, there to there it is. Sarala found it. Tracks. Proverbs 13, 22. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children, children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous for all they ever turns out. <laughs> So you want to, we, we're actually pretty much on the end of our time, and I'm really, yeah, yeah, I really, yeah. we're, we're already at like, oh, wow. Well. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're having fun, now. man. We're having Woo! fun. Yeah, let the, let the glory, the glory continue, man. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll leave you guys with that. Um, May 28th, join us. We're going to be going live, uh, what is it, 5 p.m. Israel time? It's going to be 5, I think, let me just double check. Yeah, 5 p.m. Israel time, so those of you on the East Coast in America, that's like seven hours earlier, so that's like, uh, what is that, 10, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. your time, and, uh, you know, if you miss it, we'll be, uh, it'll be online for you to enjoy it later, but, yeah, I mean, I guess you're not going to be drinking wine at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't be, but hey, you never know, I hope teach is on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'm just, I'll close up with some prayer, yeah, that's cool. Good. Lord, we just bless each person, Lord, as, uh, as they continue out their day from their morning right now, Lord, as they have their day ahead of them. Uh, around the world, wherever they're at, whatever time it is, Lord, uh, Lord, it's you, it's you time, and Lord, we just dedicate this day to you, as much as left of it, or the, the rest of it, Lord, uh, we just dedicate it to you, and we just pray you speak to us, whisper to us the mysteries of your kingdom, where you have, let us have ears to hear what you're saying in this hour, Lord, to the church, to the congregation, Lord, we just want to hear more from you, Lord, we just want you to lead and direct, and direct us, Lord, we say we put our full trust in you today. Lord, and every day, we just put our full trust in you, leading guys. We, we give you the reins, Lord, we say, we want your direction, we want your guiding, guidance, yes, we Lord. want you to be the king, Lord, you are the king, take the throne room of our heart, Lord, take the throne, it's yours, you deserve it, we just give it to you, Lord, lead us today and speak to us, Lord, and we just pray for those breakthroughs uh, that people have been praying for, Lord, we just pray, Lord, no delay, we just ask, Lord, that you just break through, Lord, break through whatever it is that's uh, keeping us from that complete vertical connection with you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, amen.